Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. All right, my name is Peter, and my beloved wife here is Gina. Yeah. Okay, so if you are new here, kindly like this video and subscribe to this channel. In fact, and on your post notification so that you get notified when we upload a new video. Yeah, and you are much welcome. Welcome to this beautiful family. And if you're already a subscriber, Thank you for staying with us and we really appreciate you. Nice to have you back again. Yeah. So a lot of you have been, you know, asking a lot of questions like you guys should do video on how you guys stay virgins. So that's what we're going to be actually sharing in this video. How God helps the two of us to stay um, virgins till marriage. So we took a lot of steps though as um, individuals. Personally, she took her own step and personally, I also took my own steps, okay? So we're actually going to be very, very realistic with you guys. Very so, practical. Very, very practical. Prior to when I met him, since I was like a small child, they've always said this, like, you know, having your first sex is very painful. That's trying to dissuade him is very painful. And I told you guys that, you see, the tiniest form of pain, I can obviate. So I really... You know, secondary school and everything, I've always just been hearing it that, you know, the sex, that first sex is very painful and everything. So, I really, from day one, just told myself, like, you know, I'm not going to do this thing. See, I am married and I'm ready to actually face the pain you get. So, I really told myself that one. It was also like, it was also like my yardstick, like, in my, in any relationship whatsoever, it was just like, um, you know, there's this uh, thing I see on Instagram. Uh, my name is this, my name is that. We both like food, and then okay, let's be friends. Uh -huh. So that it was just that stuff for me. Like once I meet somebody, and the person be like, oh, sex is just you know, the person doesn't really put so much value into sex. I just know that okay, this is where I draw the line with this person. Okay, so that has how I've been. See, I finally met him, and. I now saw that oh, we have the same school of thought. Like he is also he has his own personal discipline. Like he's from a deeper life background, so he already has his own personal encounter yeah. with God and everything coming. So it's not like I was trying to push my belief it's on me. him, yeah. okay, or anything. So he already has this rigid, strong personal belief. Mine too. I had my own strong belief to my and my belief was also mixed with the fear of the pain that we go through <laughs> so all of them together just cemented yeah. my belief system okay so what helped us was we were both like we both were in it's not like one person is acting or one person is like okay i will, I will actually tell her that no sex the marriage but you know i will look for the right time That's to strike right, you get yeah. all this kind of thing so we were genuine with each other like i said before i met him he already had his personal work with god he already was already doing things doing crusade healing the sick doing his own ministry things so it wasn't like i, I came and started you know trying to groom him or trying to push my belief on him or something he had his own personal belief and everything so it was just easy to flow you get it was just easy to flow because why sometimes why it seems like a lot of people cannot keep um themselves virginity or probably stay celibate is either one person is 50 percent in and then the other person is the one that is carrying it in head, you know, the other person is 100% in. But when two of you are coming, this one is bringing in 100, this person is bringing in 100, it's a lot easier yeah. that way than, you know, than just maybe this one is 50, this one is 50. So that's... Even the most three princess, so can two work together except they are yeah, agree. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. working together means moving forward. So if both of you want to achieve something, you need to come to a term of agreement. So yeah. that's just that what she has said. Yeah, okay, so talking about background, um, yeah, she said, I came from a deeper life background and I was raised by <laughs> the strictest deeper life person that you can <laughs> ever imagine. No, yeah, so, uh, my God, <laughs> even for me to own, hold hands, even when I met her, for me to own, shake her, hold her hands, probably while talking and <laughs> to own, hold her, 
I feel I've committed a great sin <laughs> before God. <laughs> so I was not too exposed when it comes in terms of ladies because even while growing up, if it's not if I'm not like after after school, like I'm in the house, if I'm not in the house, I'm in the church. So she's always monitoring my movement and That's it's mom. yeah, so and so she was very, very strict with me, very, very strict with me, even in terms of ladies. That was how strict she was with me. And so that actually helped me to build me up and, you know, build my mentality in that area. Like, I was not too exposed in that. And so my mind was not even thinking towards that. I was, I was um, heavily, well, I say heavily minded, heavily <laughs> focused. Okay. So I, I saw the tiniest form of anything to do with the lady as a big sin before God. So I don't even bother myself to that aspect. Yeah. So pushed down to university where we both met because that was where um, we're talking about ourselves now, how we stayed apart. Now, for me, I'll start by saying that, number one, one of the things that helped us was, now we have to understand that the God factor was there. In fact, that's the basic and that's the overall, okay? But practically now, between the both of us, I was busy like when you talk about busy in school busy with um fellowship activities like i literally had personal time for myself and even for time with her because from my year one i was already serving as an executive a whole pastor from there i moved to a follow-up secretary from there i moved to uh, um, the first vice president of the um, university where we schooled. I think I just sat there for a few months. From there, I, I moved to Subzona Outreach Secretary where I was attached to um, a lot, like I think two schools. Then from there, I moved to Subzona President where I have to handle about seven different schools in the subzone. So every day of the week, every like after classes for that day, sometimes my classes will not even end sometimes because I need to go so and that's why it involves me even traveling. So I, leave, I have to leave on time. So every day of the week, we're planning program. You know, we we interview people that want to serve as executive. We interview president and the rest. Sometimes we can say stretch a week doing all those kind of things. So I was actually busy all through. And even after I finished serving, then I still um, held um, um, the LOC chairman for a program. So I'm just trying you to... You people will not understand all of this stuff, but <laughs> so if you are in my fashion, you may understand a little of what is... Yeah, so I'm just trying to give like, I was literally busy all through my... So I had that in mind. She was the person I was looking forward to. If you have watched all the other videos, how we met and the rest, you know that, okay, we're actually close and, okay, we're actually heading towards the same direction, but we didn't have that time, like that space to, you know, so, um, start so, thinking so towards, things. <laughs> yeah, start <laughs> doing things like that. So, and, um, okay, let me allow to say our own okay, part of the university part. On my own side, my university days too, I, I also served in school fellowship as area pastor and rest, but as I, it wasn't more about that, say I was, I'm like 100% an academian, like I am very into my academics, you know, so, and in school then it was, it's just me and me by myself. I did not used to, you know, sheets, no copy, all those kind of things during exam. So people don't even like sitting close to me during exam. So I just know that Omojina is you and you alone, you get just me and you, this spirit. So I always, from the beginning of the semester, I'm preparing, I'm preparing for exam, I'm preparing for test because I know that, as I mentioned that exam, I will not talk to anybody like, if my classmates watch these videos, they can attest to that that Gina will not talk to anybody in example. So, like I said, I was just so into my academics because I wasn't so much into fellowship again. Like, I was just like, at the point that I became just like a normal member, it was the one that was doing leadership. Active, yeah, yeah, I was active in fellowship. For me, I was not so active again. But what was taking my attention was my academic, like, I know that I am on my own. I so one thing about sex is you need a place to actually have the sex. You need a platform to actually have the sex. Yeah. So when you, you are busy... And you can't just go and jump into sex. Into because sex. It's just like, it starts from the mind. Yes. Okay? You start processing it, like, you start processing it. And yeah. then when you find yourself having an opportunity, it's not like that is when it just started. You've always had something and like that in mind. Just like you've not had a platform to, to express, express yourself. You, get, you know yeah. when I see people saying that they mistakenly had sex, I used to wonder, like, how do you mistakenly have sex? Because 
you will pull your top, pull your trouser if you wear all these um, singlets and what they call this tight. You will still put tight before you not put your own this, before you not try to go in and that's like really painful, the first going in. You know, it's so like as you know mistakenly, I don't know shower, but I just feel like it was not just we were just too no, I don't believe know. it's a devil, honestly, because now that I'm having sex, I see the process it actually takes to have sex. Even till now, like I've been having sex for like six months now, and up till now, I still you know when you want to still go in like calling to my husband, when brother Joseph wants to go in, see that first going in, it's still painful. You understand? Yeah. It's after Rua Joseph has finally entered a uh, hair, maybe the, from the second third going in a uh, hair. Uh, 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 that's oh when God. it will not be so it will not be painful again. You will not be enjoying it. So like all of those process like it's free flow of power. <laughs> so all of those process like it's a lot. So I like I don't really know Sha because like I said, I was in school. I was I used to do there's something school I for then TDB today break. I used to do TV with my friend, so like there was no that I don't know how to explain it. it wasn't just there, like that platform. Another thing too was I had roommates. He had roommates. Had roommate so we didn't have that opportunity, you know, I, to that platform was not just there because to actually have sex, you need the right place. And I'm kind of blessed that I try not that if I want to have sex, my first sex has to be like perfect with some um, you know scented candles and roses and everything i don't come and have sex behind the tree mm-hmm. <laughs> or inside car or something you get so that was it so i had roommates like my final year that when i started staying alone he uh, always had roommate or true safe and so like i said one of the ways that helped us was we're both busy yeah we're so, both so busy. for this aspect now um you try to keep yourself like just try and get something doing. If you're the kind of person that you're always thinking about sex, sex and the rest, yeah. try and put your mind to other things. Yeah. Okay. That's why the Bible says, guide, guide your heart with all diligence. For out of you are the issues of like like as a man thinking, is that like your thoughts are very, very important. What do you think about every day? What do you see? You know, what do you watch? You know, sometimes it can be seen movies and that involves a lot of sexual activities and you know those kind of things. It might to um, shock you that you feel those things are not having any impact in your life, but as time it goes is. on, the devil keeps bringing those pictures into your head, and then before you know, your body chemistry start changing, and mm-hmm. you start looking at that. And anytime you find yourself alone with somebody, you always want to just you know do that. So that is it for. Um, I'm talking about um, something. He said something about careful things you watch. When I was in secondary school, then I used to love Telemundo like I was. Addicted, I had shows you know, in Ontario, the Mundo that I used to follow up and everything. And then the Holy Spirit, the Mundo? yeah, when I was in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit then that told me that I stopped watching Telemundo. And then I stopped watching Telemundo. That's how I stopped watching from that time till now. Like, even now that okay, like I will say, okay, let me still try some this, I just put it and let me see. But I still cannot just because when he told me then that long ago, like I was in secondary school then when he said it to when he told me I struggled that initial time, but after a while I stopped watching it totally and then it now went from to like total hatred for Telemundo programs. So I am saying this and using this. I'm not saying that okay, because you now doesn't watch did you not watch Telemundo, you probably not gonna watch Telemundo too. That's my personal experience that's what God told me as at that time when I was in secondary school. So but well, I'm just adding to what to say that guiding your heart, okay, guide what you see because all of all those things they have a weight off. So like I said, our life was just in phases because there was a phase that we were very busy where we were students, I was into academics, it was into the work of God and everything. So say so I say you are into the work of God like I was into the work <laughs> of God. I was into the work of God just I think it was more serious actually. Yeah, it was more serious. So after that phase of life passed, there was not another phase where we were done with school. I didn't really have academics to think of. I did not have it it was also done with um yeah, saving at that time. Scholarship. So yeah. this is another phase whereby we actually have the opportunity. As I then said, I was going to stay alone then. So this is not another phase of life and how we skate through that phase is what we're also going to look at now. Like how we're able to sustain ourselves because 
like we said, prior to now, we're busy, so that helped us. But then this new phase whereby we stay, like, you know, we're not um, busy anymore. Yeah, we're not it, that busy as we were. We were. Yeah. At, at the point, he said, he now later got his own apartment. He was not later staying with people, or staying with his brother again. He was not staying alone. Me too, I was staying alone. Sexual purity is very, very possible. Like, very, very possible. Yeah. Now, you know, some people might say that when you are hungry and you are being served a food that you don't like, there is high tendency that you might want to reject that food. Okay, just take for example now, you're having appetite to eat indomie and you are being given jollof rice. Um, it's possible that you might not want to eat the jollof rice. Okay, uh, what, what I'm saying, and I'm saying that to say that the lady <coughs> I'm in a relationship with the kind of lady that I was attracted to. So, um, putting me in a stage now where I have the opportunity now, so okay, if I want to probably have sex or say something, do something relating to that, I can just as well ask her, like, um, how, how did you cope? Was she not attracting you? Were you not moved and all those things? You know, there are different, there are, there are different levels to it. You need to work on the state of your mind concerning sex because you can find yourself in a situation whereby you are the only person in the room. What is coming to your mind at that very point in time is very, very important. Joseph found himself with Potiphar. Why did Joseph say no to Potiphar? He would have said yes. Why did he say no? Joseph weighed the advantages and the disadvantages of doing it at that point in time. And he discovered that he has a whole lot of things to lose if he actually do that thing at that very point in time, he has a lot of things to lose. He has destiny to miss out on. He has God to go and face. You know, so many things he has to lose. And I have to talk to myself, okay, fine. If by eventual, I find myself in a room now where there is somebody I love and there's somebody I like and this person, bam, stuck naked before me. Definitely, the move to have sex will be there. But the question is, I, I, I told myself, is, what do I have to lose? And I listed a lot of things I have to lose and I said no like wherever I find myself in a situation like this I don't think I want to do this so that helped me to you know make my heart more stronger with the help of the Holy Spirit so even after school there were times that we were alone like maybe she comes visiting and probably I go to visit her or we're alone but those things don't come to her mind and even if it start coming there I've already built my mind in such a way that I can actually push those thoughts out because I know that I have a lot of things to lose if, per adventure, I find myself wanting to do it. You understand? Because it was quite easy for us because I was a virgin and she was also a virgin. So we don't know if somebody wants to ask, who we start first, and all those kind of things. So it was not like, easy. It was, with, with us, it was actually easy. Like, it was very mm -hmm. easy because, like you said, we were both virgins. So if probably one person was already experienced, like uh, mm -hmm. that, you know the right thing to do. Right now, and then and if, then I, if, I, if I take this leg, leg this person will just spot uh, like that. Yeah, <laughs> so if I go like this, but I didn't have any experience, like yeah. Like, so she didn't also have any experience. We were just, we just normal persons. Like I, like okay, since you use food, let me also use food too. It's just like okay, I'm not eating sushi right now. I cannot sit down and be craving sushi. Do you understand? Like, I'm, because I've not tasted sushi, so I cannot just sit down all day and be like, damn, I'm craving sushi. I feel like it's sushi, like, you know? But I can crave roasted corn. You know why I can crave roasted corn? Because I've eaten, I've eaten roasted corn. So I can actually, like, crave it. So it was easy for us because we've not actually had sex before. If probably we've had sex and now we're trying to be celibate, probably the discussion would have been different. Yeah. Uh -huh. But we have not had sex, so it was very, very easy because, like I said, I, I won't be craving, I won't be craving, you know, <laughs> all of all those stuff. Like, and even if whatsoever, like, we, who wants to start the process now? Is it mm -hmm. Peter that will start the process? Or is it Peter that will start the process? Because sex is like, a, it's a full process. It's not a mistake. It's not who we're talking and then we mistakenly had sex or who we're gisting and then we mistakenly had sex. It's actually a process. So that's actually one thing that helped us 
when you know prior to university and when we're done with university and everything like yeah, that. And I want to also feel like if if you value your, your relationship with God a lot, I you value your relationship with the Holy Spirit at every yeah. point in time. There are times where He will caution you, even though maybe you are together alone. Because what I'm saying this is that a lot of people try to tell you avoid avoid seeing the person, avoid seeing the person. Avoid. Now yeah. let come here and list a whole lot of things, a lot, a lot of do's and don'ts. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't. Go to the person, don't be alone with the person, meet in public. Mm, that's what I'm saying. Now, what if a situation come now that you now find yourself alone with the person? What will you now do? Will you now just uh, because they say we should not be alone? Now uh, we're alone. And you know the funny thing, if you want to actually get married to somebody, eh? there are some discussions that people will just have to sit down and talk. Like, even when we're planning our wedding, we have to do a lot of budgeting, calculation, and the rest. We have to see and talk. We cannot go up to Genesis. And be talking in Genesis and planning budget and calculating, okay, we'll spend this for you. So you will just have to, like, I don't know, Shabu, if you feel like that will work for you. Because I just, like, just, like what you were saying, train yourself, train your mind. You don't prepare for war in the day of battle, you prepare before that time. Yeah. Like, you tell yourself, if I find myself in this situation, what do I do? Exactly. If I find myself locked up in the room with a sister I and mean, craving for, and man, everything is set, it's just for you to enter like what will you do you know so you have to prepare your mind and prepare yourself all those things so that it's quite not you know some people like ah this thing take me on away. i was not ready for this so i didn't even know what to do i didn't even know the next step to take if you have prepared yourself like if you have fully prepared yourself god will definitely help you yeah. you understand because you don't know where the devil is waiting for you exactly. that's one thing the devil can wait for you anywhere <laughs> at any point in time he can <laughs> just wait for you there and just bam so what will you do at that very point in time? So, so you just you just need to like be you know, like I said, you just need to be very very prayerful also because prayer is the key. In as much as I said that oh, nothing was moving me whatsoever whatsoever, and I done a lot of prayers in my teenage days. Like when I was in teenage church, we used to do teenage just camp thing. We used to pray. Eh? Like we used to pray. They used to talk about a lot about purity. I don't really know if teenage churches of these days who still do all of all this stuff now, but then they used to always bombard us with stuff, you know, with prayer, God give me the grace to keep myself for you and all of all those stuff. So in my teenagers I I did a lot of prayer. Even as a young adult, I was still praying about it too, like God help me. Like I and I really see that God actually helped me. Honestly speaking. There's an adage that says that if you're living in a glass house, you don't throw stones anyhow. Okay. So for us, um, we spoke about some things like meeting in public places and also meeting in private places. Because we actually don't have any cravings at that very or point. Past in history. Or of past sex. histories of sex. You understand? So, but you yourself, you know that you have been sexually active before and you've prayed to God to forgive you and you want to start a new life. And probably the person you met also is in the same train with you. Yeah. Now, you're always going to this person's house. Okay, you're going to this person's house steady and this person is seeing you all the time. <laughs> all the time, yeah. All the time, very risky. So, like, what, what, what are you looking for? What you understand? For? So, um, you have to be extremely careful. careful. Like, extremely careful. Like, mm? if you don't want to, like, fall again, then you have to take all the uh, precautions. All the precautions. All the precautions. If, had, if better, don't go to If you need to meet now. in public places, meet, always meet in public meet in places. Public places right? Because, <laughs> because it's, it's other actually. So, sorry to say, I don't feel like I don't want to discourage you in case you are watching this video and you are already sexually active and you are trying to, you know, be celibate now. I'm not trying to discourage you, but I just want to tell you that you need to put extra effort if you are actually you, if you were sexually active before. Or oh, whoever you are dating right now as we say is sexually active, then you have to put a strike. See, with us we didn't really put in so much effort. Like I said, we don't have any past history of sex, we're not sexually active. So there was not much effort. Like we didn't we even broke some rules, you know those rules of don't go to the person's house, don't this, don't that. 
we broke those rules because he used to come to see me then I used to go and see him and look for those stuff. Okay. When when is when the scene started was when she started her own YouTube channel. Now I used to help her to set up. To Sometimes set up. I would hold the camera for, for hours there, yeah, so making videos and the rest. Me. I have to correct her, do this, do that, exactly. do that. So imagine probably I've always wanted to do something, or my mindset towards sex was not, uh, was not pure. pure. What would something have happened? Something would have happened again. So. It, and then he used to come to us to help me hold my camera to make my YouTube videos. There, so so that was just that's just it. Yeah, you know, it's real sexually necessarily active, you have to be extra, like extra careful because it's going to be a little bit harder because you've tasted the food, you've tasted the food. Yeah, you know how it tastes. You know how it tastes. And so, so you know, you know, you know the feeling you and everything. But when you've not tasted it, it's a little bit easier for you to resist because... You, know, you have tasted something and then this, that thing is now presented to you. Yes. It's hard for you to say no. no. But when you have not tasted that thing before and it's presented for you, uh -huh. you can decide it's not to, no. I don't want to... It's not like, like, just... like that sushi thing I talked about. If they give me sushi now, I've not tasted sushi, so I don't think I would be so tempted to wanting to eat sushi you get. But I've not tasted it, so I don't know whether it's sweet or if it's bitter or if it's... Too. Make me you, you get, but if probably I'm eating sushi and I know that oh, this sushi is very, very sweet, like this sushi is to boss brain. Like when you bring it now, right? You know, chances are I'm a four. So you have to be extremely careful. Like if you have been sexually active before, you have to take all necessary precautions, like take all the necessary precautions if you if you can, don't go to the person's house, if you can just meet in public or at least let somebody be there with you, let be let it be a third party, you know, take all the necessary Precautions that you can take, okay? yeah, just because like this, okay. it's a personal risk. Like Christianity is a personal risk. Everybody has to work at their own salvation with fear and trembling. Okay, so you cannot totally rely on okay, see what Gina and Peter did. You get because what's worked for us mm -hmm. may not work mm -hmm. for you. So you cannot necessarily rely on just that. So you, you need to know. Like when the Holy Spirit told me to stop watching Telemundo, that was me at that point of my life. What What is your situation right now? Like what was your own? Where are you at? What point are you right now? Do you understand? So what are the things? You, you, you will know the things you need to cut off. You will know. You will even know some of the friendship you need to cut off. So all those friends that when I were talking is always about sex or about yeah, just things to just, just to all those erotic you. talks. Okay? So you, you will know the things that, that if you are very close to your list with like a period of time, you're listening to a lot of worship songs and all of those stuff. The only spirit must have dropped it in your mind like, see, you need to cut off from this friend. To cut off from this, there's just you know, the only spirit will tell you, okay. So, everybody just let everybody just try because at the end of the day, Peter will stand on his own and face <laughs> God. Me, I'll stand on my own and face God. God will not judge us together. <laughs> so, that is it. Yeah, so like the sushi stuff she was saying, I also have not tasted sushi before. So, when they present it to us, it's easier for the two of us to say, it, but I'm glad I've tasted sushi before now, and it's. Very, very amazing, very, very sweet. I'll try to convince her. Come, test this thing, it's very sweet. So yeah, if your partner has tested it before, too. You are still at risk. You are still at risk because he <laughs> will try to convince you. Yeah, to do it. so you have to so, be don't get and won't get. So that's just it. Um, very, 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 very careful. Yeah, you so have to be careful. Like, like, you like, you can actually not... pull through. You know, one thing the devil tries to do is he tries to make you look as though it is not easy. easy. Like, it's not easy. You cannot do it. You cannot do it. Actually, it's not easy. You understand? I would, if I tell you that it's easy, it's a lie. Because now me, I've tasted it. I know how it looks like. So I will tell you, like, it's not easy. Sexual purity is not easy. But by the grace of oh, God, God, with the effort of the Holy easy. Spirit, like it is easy to make it very yeah. easy for like, you. I'm very, I'm very, very, very. I always talk about the Holy Spirit all the time because I know how important it is for every Christian, every believer to have the Holy Spirit in them. Like you know, we need to. Understand that the Holy Spirit speaks to you. You need to understand all things because anything you want to do in this life, anything you need, you need the Holy Spirit to help you. You need the Holy Spirit to direct you. So you want to like keep yourself. You need the Holy Spirit because if you want to keep yourself by yourself, your strength, you, your, your strength, strength will not carry, will not carry you. You. <laughs> you understand your strength you will not carry you. To fail. You have it. So when we were have been talking that we did this, we did this, we did this, but then there is also something which is the person of the Holy Spirit. 
that I was, was helping us, I was pushing us. Yeah. Because if the Holy Spirit did not help us, see all of those stuff that I'm saying that I'm very busy, it's very busy, it's all of those stuff that have not worked. But because we know that the Holy Spirit, we understand the person of the Holy Spirit, we understand the need to pray. So we've already, you know, prayed. Like I said, before I went to university as a teenager, I was really even praying about sexual purity long before I even met him. Yeah, and another thing most times is, you know, once you fall in the first time, you know, the devil tries to make you look as though God will not forgive you again. The truth is, if you intentionally ask God for mercy and you promise not to go back again and you want to do the right thing, seriously, the Holy Spirit will help you. He's always ready to like, help you. He will like, help you. Don't, don't, don't feel like you are the worst person on earth or you have committed a big sin and all those things like that. No. So if any man be in Christ is a new creature. Creation. All things are past one build, all things are become new. Like don't don't look at yourself as that thing, like that thing, that you know, putting yourself in that kind of state. Situation. God still cares about you a lot. Like he's he our helper. You. Yeah, he, he cares about you a lot. So don't look at yourself as uh, I'm disgusting before my father. No, just ask him for mercy. And move forward with your life. He knows, just like and even if you fall, eh, the, 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 the Holy Spirit is so sweet that even if you fall, eh, he will help you to come up again. Yeah. <laughs> and even if you fall again, he will still help you come up again. Like that doesn't mean, yeah. The Bible says should we continue in sin that grace may abound. No, obviously. But all I'm trying to say is that do not let the devil guilt shame you. Do not let the devil put you in a place whereby eh, you've been trying since to be sexually pure to. Be to abstain since you were probably 19 years or since you were 20 years and see you, you are 27 years now or the guy you go into a relationship with is still end up having sex with them you know, and the devil can be very messy like he will try to kill, shame you and all of all those stuff always shut the mouth of the devil you understand, the, the bible has said you like faith and faith and faith and faith in as much as you are ready to ask God for mercy he, keeps, he will forgive you he will pull you, he will help you it will help you to scale through, okay? But you also need to be ready to or willing to be helped also. Mm. So that is it with our purity journey. Yes. Another thing also that helped us to we got married <laughs> early. Yeah, we got married. <laughs> we got early. married yeah. early. So like that's... immediately we left school. We got married. I was still doing my NYC when I got married. I just left school to do my NYC. He also just left school too. So. We if probably maybe after our left school now still another five years <laughs> of dating again. Uh -huh. I don't know. But that's another thing that helped us. Like I said, we're just being very, very practical and real with you guys. Yeah. We got married early, like got married early. I just I got married like almost immediately. That's also what helped us too. So if you are financially stable, you can take care of a woman, you can People have something, and you, know, and you know you are with the right person. And you know you are with the right person. You pray. Don't go ahead and get married. There's no point dating for long. The only reason you should date for long is only two things: you are either in school or you are not financially stable yet. That's the yeah, only reason you date gotten, for long. I have not gotten a go ahead from God. Probably a clarity or a go ahead from God. Yeah. That's all. So, and, and so that's just it. So. Like I said, don't don't come and you are financially stable. Some I see some people, some guys, they are financially stable. They have it, and then you are dating somebody for three years, four years, five years. What are you dating for? Just get married because it's going to help you save you the stress too. So that is just what have helped us. Literally said everything, like <laughs> everything. Yeah. So thank you for staying glued to this video. If you have watched it now, thank you and. If you also want to share your own personal experience, like what um, helped you, how if you, if you also stay the in marriage, some practical steps you took. Yeah, just comment can, below just so that other people can leave. Some of you that are commenting, we are seeing you, I will also reply your comments. Please, those comments mean a whole lot to us. Thank you for your encouragement. That is what is keeping us pushing because we know you have, we have people out there. <laughs> okay, I really want you to know that from the depth of our heart, we love you guys so much. and. So thank you so much. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Share. If you have not subscribed, what are you waiting wait you for? for? Subscribe now. <laughs> or you have to click it now. <laughs> All right. Thank See you. you guys in our next video. All right. Bye. Bye.